We know that uh, he'd gone back into rehab just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yes, that's what we understand. Obviously, he had recently um, undergone brain surgery, but as far as we can understand, this is not linked. Um, he is said to have suffered a heart attack at his home in um, Buenos Aires. That's what uh, sources close to him are confirming. Um, as things stands, not much, no, much more is known. Obviously, we know that he comes. He has a very troubled past. He's had a history of uh, drug and uh, alcohol addiction, and it is understood that he had been uh, back in uh, rehab for that recently, and that he was uh, uh, treating uh, this again. Obviously, uh, something that has. Um, Followed him for a lot of his career since retiring. He obviously also had problems during his career, uh, though he had uh, reinvented himself, becoming the manager of Argentina uh, in 2008. We thought this had been a comeback for him, but obviously uh, it seems that his demons were following him uh, till the very end, Francois. All right, stay with us, Selena. He was a man of many comebacks. Uh, let's cross to uh, Guardian contributor Igor Mladanovic, uh, who joins us now. Thanks for speaking with us here on France 24. What was your reaction when that shocking news uh, came in? Hi, well, um, like any sports fan, I think uh, I, I was shocked. Um, of course, we knew that uh, Diego Maradona had been uh, treated for a blood clot, a very serious condition uh, two weeks ago, but um, initial reports had been that he uh, was in good shape. And so this comes as a as a very very terrible surprise, um, adding to a, other bad events that happened this year. And uh, um, I think many football fans, but especially uh, Argentina fans, especially Napoli fans, will be uh, grieving tonight uh, a lot more of uh, an, than an icon. He was uh, an example for for many many football fans. He was uh, a symbol of. Um, underdogs triumphing against the odds and uh, unfortunately it was difficult for him to um, separate um, uh, real life from football and uh, he was uh, someone who um, was uh, who could not be contained both on and off the pitch not could could not be contained you know Igor my my childhood and I guess a good part of my adult life uh, has been basked in the eternal argument Who's better, Pele or Maradona? And uh, Pele, by, by contrast, uh, was, uh, as you describe it, uh, a choir boy uh, next to Maradona, the, 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 the bad boy. Yes, um, both are arguably the two greatest players in, in football history. Both were larger-than-life characters as well, but in different ways. Pelé is um, uh, the gender that uh, every family dreams to have, and uh, Diego Maradona was the bad boy who uh, was uh, unpredictable, both on the pitch and off the pitch. Um, what, what your contributor early, said earlier is that um, it was difficult for him to uh, contain the, the attention and uh, the solicitations uh, around him. Um, since uh, since moving to Barcelona, where he started uh, being addicted to uh, cocaine, uh, and then after after that in, in Napoli, he uh, was uh, in touch with uh, some mafia families um, who obviously played a very bad part in in, in his uh, um, in his life and. Um, Unfortunately, he was someone who was very much at ease on the football pitch. But as soon as he stepped out of the of the football pitch, he sometimes looked as though he did not really know what to do with his life. And um, he he remained in touch with football until the end. Um, he coached Argentina, then he coached the club in uh, throughout the world, and lastly in Argentina again. And um, Obviously, football was was his life, but it was such a such a drug for him, such a such an unbelievable force for him that uh, uh, once he stepped out of the field, uh, his physical condition deteriorated, his life went down, his weight went up, and um, contrary to Pelé, he's someone who uh, struggled to live outside the football pitch. Um, which changes nothing to the fact he remained an incredible influence for uh, his fans, for new fans also coming in, uh, picking an interest in the game, because he represented uh, a symbol of, of joy. Uh, he represented more than more than the sport itself. Um, he was uh, so passionate about uh, about football and 
is it's a very sad day, of course, for um, for everyone who ever watched him, uh, both live and uh, and after his retirement. It's a very very sad day. Very very sad day. Uh, again, a man of many comebacks. You mentioned Barcelona, which was his first club when he moved to to Europe in uh, uh, in the early '80s. Then, as we were saying earlier with correspondent Sima Gupta. He puts Naples on the map and then returns to Spain at Seville. Yes, um, it's it's quite incredible to think that um, he he suffered a, a very serious injury uh, at Barcelona and um, basically a broken leg. And um, we don't really know when he started picking up his, his drug habit, but many observers point to, to that period as the time when he was recovering, having not yet made an impact in European football and um, not really knowing what to do, being extremely anxious about the, the whole situation. And uh, not only did he manage to recover from this uh, terrible injury, he uh, then proceeded to, to take out Europe by storm. Uh, no single player had as much of an influence on both a club, uh, Napoli, as much as a country, Argentina. As, as Maradona, the church in Argentina dedicated to him, treating him literally as, as a god um, by, by his staunchest uh, supporters. And uh, his status was um, unreachable. Even Lionel Messi, uh, who is arguably the greatest player of all time, says that he could carry on playing for a million years. He would never reach Maradona's level because... Uh, Diego Maradona did something which uh, which was inconceivable, uh, taking middle-level teams uh, like Argentina in the mid-80s, like Napoli, and basically uh, bringing them single-handedly uh, with their weight on his shoulders to the top of football, and in doing so, uh, representing an inspiration of individual brilliance, of, uh, of uh, creativity, of love for the game. Um, uh, which basically no one could come close to. And um, unfortunately, today um, might be the right opportunity to say that um, it was difficult for him to, to, to manage this load off the pitch because he was surrounded with people at Napoli. He was surrounded with bad people who had nothing to do with football and who uh, influenced him in, in bad ways. And it's it's impossible for one person to carry so much weight on his shoulders um, without um, without it dripping over into uh, the excesses that we, we then uh, observed uh, starting in the 1990s with some uh, positive tests, positive drug tests. And then, of course, in the 2000s, uh, in 2005, he was already treated. Uh, he had bypass surgery. Uh, in, uh, in Argentina, and already at the time we were fearing for his life, uh, barely aged 45. Um, it is sad because uh, he recovered from this period of obesity. He took up managerial functions around the world and uh, he looked in shape. Um, that's why many, many people wanted and to think that he would now carry on. And unfortunately, yeah. he, his life uh, has come to an end. Yeah, a, a man of so many comebacks. Uh, Igor, one final question. You know, I, I remember covering the 1994 World Cup in the United States, and we saw a trimmed down Maradona uh, light up the group phase. And we thought, wow, this is too good to be true. And then, of course, the news came in that he'd tested positive for cocaine use. Yes, that was, of course, uh, a terrible news for any football fan, but um, that is uh, approximately the time when we, we felt that um, his, uh, his, his, he, his brain was still coming up with, uh, with the ideas and the movements on the pitch, but his legs couldn't follow. And uh, it seemed like uh, he was suffering from from seeing basically his his entire life, uh, what had motivated him to play um, for so long, basically uh, being taken off, uh, taken away from him because of time. And um, he was not a man of timing uh, of the pitch. He was uh, on the pitch, the most graceful player, uh, um, the, the best player, the best passer, the best scorer. 
Uh, but off the pitch, he didn't know what timing meant, and uh, he he didn't know when how to plan for uh, retirement. He didn't know what to do with his life really um, w when when there was no game involved. And um, yes, uh, but of course he was also because Pelé played a lot earlier than him, mm. uh, perhaps the first global superstar in the game, um, and uh, the first to really. Um, leveraged uh, incredible media coverage of uh, in football uh, starting in the 1980s mm. which of course uh, contributed to his superstar status and the excesses which we then observed Igor Mladenovic uh, we're going to pick up on that point many thanks for joining us there Igor Mladenovic contributor uh, to the Guardian newspaper if you're just joining us here on France 24 